Hello everybody, my name is Sankara and in today's video I am here to bring you another Egyptian God deck. With the Egyptian God Structure deck we are continuing the series on the Egyptian God Structure deck and today I have combined the Obelisk and the Slifer deck, one of each combined into one deck and today I am here to bring you that deck and show you how to build it yourself and how to work it now. Let's get started. So, first of all, obviously, we have Obelisk and Slifer. Um, of course, only one comes with each deck, and I'm only using one of each deck. If you want a combination of three of each deck, or three of one deck, then click the playlist above. If you're watching this the day it came out, you may have to wait a couple days for the three of both decks combination. But this is just one of each structure deck combined. So, one Obelisk, one Slifer, and one Beast King Barbaros. These are the main three cards that you're going to be going for. They're your main monsters. Um, the powerhouses of the deck and basically what the whole deck is based around. Yes, even Beast King Barbaros. Next we got Gizmek Makami, the Ferocious Fanged Fortress. This guy's effect, um, he will allow you to discard a monster and add one monster whose attack equals its own defense from your deck to your hand. So you can add Slifer or Obelisk with this guy's effect by discarding one monster. Very useful, especially when we have only three of them. So this just gives us another option to grab one of your Egyptian gods. Now we'll go into how to actually summon the gods. So first of all, Angel 01. This card is insane. This card is the best card ever. This card is like the best card in the whole deck other than Soul Crossing. Angel 01 is amazing. He special summons itself by revealing a level seven or higher monster from your hand. And while he's on the field, you can tribute summon a level seven or higher monster during your main phase in addition to your normal summon or set. So not only does he get himself out special summoned, but he also gives you an extra tribute summon, which makes it incredibly easy to summon an Egyptian god. You just need him plus a Ra's Disciple or something, and you've got your god card out nice and easy. It's amazing. Angelo 1, brilliant. Love it. Reactor Slime. This card, again, like I've been saying the past three weeks, this card isn't... This card isn't the greatest on its own. It definitely has its uses. It's three monsters in one. You summon this guy. Main phase, you can special summon two slime tokens. His second effect is even better. During the battle phase... Oh, I just realized I misread something, so that's that's awesome. You can summon Divine Beast Monsters. Anyway, um, as I was saying, during the battle phase, you can tribute him to set a Metal Reflex Slime straight from your deck that can be activated that turn. That's very useful. Metal Reflex Slime special summons itself. It has 3,000 defense points. We love it. But the best part about Metal Reflex Slime is, of course, Egyptian God Slime. This card's absolutely amazing. It does not come with the structure deck, but if you own it, if you can get your hands on it, add it. This, this card is great, this is fantastic, this is the best reason to have Reactor Slime. If this came with the deck, then I would want to run triple Reactor Slime, triple Metal Reflex Slime, because this card's absolutely amazing. But, doesn't come with the Structure deck, and that's what we're working with today. So, just one Reactor Slime still definitely has its uses. Um, one of him, plus anything that lets you have an extra Tribute Summon, and you can go straight into an Egyptian Garb. Next, we have three Ra's Disciples, same thing really. One of them, plus anything that gives you an extra Tribute Summon, and you can go straight into your Egyptian God. This guy special summons two more of himself from the hand or deck. He's great. Condemned Witch. This card will get you your um, Forbidden Chalice. So it gets one card from your deck to your hand. You can also tribute her during your opponent's main phase to special summon a level 4 fairy from your deck. In most cases, Ra's Disciple. So this card is also a 3-in-1 during your opponent's main phase. Just be sure of that. And gets you a Forbidden Chalice. So it gives you an extra add. So that's the Ra's Disciples engine. Next we got the Nimble engine. So we got triple nimble mamanga this guy is great when he's destroyed by battle you gain a thousand life points and special summon two more very easy tribute fodder and protects your life points as well while you're waiting to draw your egyptian gods he's great so we summon him with super nimble mega hamster amazing love it super nimble mega hamster flip special summon one level three or lower beast type monster from your deck i.e you're a nimble mamanga and also nimble beaver when this card is normal summoned you can special summon a level three or lower nimble monster from your deck or graveyard remember it's only when when normal summons, so this effect won't apply if you summon it with Super Nimble Mega Hamster. And Super Nimble Mega Hamster's effect is the flip effect, so that won't apply if you summon it with Nimble Beaver. So these guys are meant to summon your Nimble Mamongas. Just keep that in mind. Unless you have no other option, you're going for the Mamonga. Next we have our Darkness Engine. So we have three Arima, the Wicked Warden. This guy's a pretty great draw engine, and with Lair of Darkness, he allows you to tribute to your opponent's monsters as well. So Arima's great. He lets you draw one card by tributing a Dark 
monster. Uh, you can discard him to add Lair of Darkness from your deck to your hand, which is also fantastic. Lair of Darkness is just brilliant in this deck. And if you tribute a monster other than himself, you can add a monster with 2,000, a dark monster with 2,000 or more defense from your deck to your hand, which will be Duke Shade, the Sinister Shadow Lord. This card is also great. He's not so great for the engine, not for summoning your Egyptian gods, not for getting your Egyptian gods, but he is an extra powerhouse. And with Lair of Darkness, you can take your opponent's monsters to summon him as well. So he clears out the field and can summon a potentially very big monster that's comparable to an Egyptian god. Next we have Evil Swarm Mandragora. This guy is a level 4 and you can special summon him if your opponent controls more monsters than you do. He's also a dark monster so works with the dark engine. Same with Kelly Glock Row. If you control a dark monster you can special summon this card from your hand. Fantastic. And Breaker the Magical Warrior. Another dark monster for the dark engine and he can also get rid of a spell or trap on the field. That's it for the monsters in the main deck. Well, there is no extra deck, so that's it for the monsters. Next, let's move on to the spells and traps. First, we got two Soul Crossing. Luckily, each deck comes with a Soul Crossing, so we can add two of them into this one, but only two because each deck only comes with one Soul Crossing, sadly. But Soul Crossing is an absolutely amazing card. This card will let you tribute up to three of your opponent's monsters in order to summon your Egyptian god. It will also let you summon your god during your opponent's turn, which is amazing and you contribute up to three of their monsters. So if you don't have any monsters and they have three monsters, just Soul Crossing, God, done, easy. <laughs> it's brilliant. Soul Crossing is absolutely amazing. This is probably the best card in the decks, followed by Angelo 1. Like, this card's amazing. Next we have the Monarch Storm 4th. It's quite easy to get two tributes out. It is less easy to get the third out without wasting your normal summon. So the Monarch Storm 4th will allow you to steal that third tribute from your opponent. And of course, tributing your opponent's monsters has all sorts of benefits. It gets out of things that can't be targeted or destroyed it just tributes them, doesn't target, doesn't destroy, it's fantastic, same with Soul Crossing, same reasons, clears the board of any problematic monsters, it's brilliant. Next up, Double Summon, once again, it's very easy to get out three monsters using your normal summon, but then you need to use your normal summon to summon your Egyptian guard, so, Double Summon, fantastic for that, extra normal summon. The true name, this card will add or special summon an Egyptian guard from your deck, plus get you the top card of your deck, assuming that you know what that top card is, and how do we know that? Card Advance, Card Advance will let us rearrange the top five cards of our deck and also gives you an extra tribute summon the, during this turn which makes it absolutely fantastic and combines well with true name so this also gives you an extra normal summon much like double summon and it works well with the true name and just generally organizes the top of your deck which is fantastic i mean if there's an egyptian god on there you can put it on top instead next we have the lair of darkness this card's great makes all monsters on the field dark and you can tribute one of your opponent's dark monsters to activate a dark monster no, just to activate a card effect, you contribute one dark monster your opponent controls. That includes Arima's effect, Duke Shade's effect, and I believe Reactor Slime's effect, though I'm not entirely sure about that one. I haven't found any ruling on it, but I think that's how it works. But in any case, Lair of Darkness just really adds to the dark engine. It adds to Arima's effect. You can get rid of your opponent's monsters by tributing them, not targeting or destroy. Tribute them. Same with Duke Shade. Summon them by tributing opponent's monsters. And Kali Glow Claw Crow needs a dark monster on the field so if you have none of these guys you've only got these guys if you've got a layer of darkness you're set to go next forbidden chalice this is the only forbidden spell that we have you can add it with condemned witch it's mainly the only reason it's in there is just for that search potential but forbidden chalice is also the best of the forbidden spells at least as far as the ones that come with um the structure decks we don't have forbidden droplets sadly but the other options were forbidden lance and forbidden dress these cards are great um but they're great Great for protection of your monsters and the monsters you're trying to protect or can't be targeted. Well, Slifer can, I guess, and Barbarous, but Obelisk can't. They're just not as great. And we've also got March of the Monarchs, which is the next card to protect them. So Forbidden Chalice is definitely the best one because it negates a monster's effect and that is just has all sorts of uses, as I'm sure you know. Next, March of the Monarchs protects your tribute summoned monsters, including Barbaros, any of the Egyptian gods, and even Gizmek Mikami. Brain Control lets you steal one of your opponent's monsters once again. <coughs> It's very easy to get out two monsters by using up your 
Uh, it's very easy to get out two monsters without using up your normal summon. Brain Control will give you that extra boost to steal your opponent's monster. Tribute three to summon your god. Monster Reborn, same deal, but this can also bring back an Egyptian god, but it will only come back for one turn. Of course, better than it just sitting in the graveyard, really. Swords of Revealing Light, this will protect your tributes. This is very important card to have as swords will protect your tributes for three turns, making it very easy to keep three monsters on the field and then tribute them for an Egyptian god. So swords is definitely needed. Same thing with Book of Moon, it can be used to protect your monsters, it can also be used to disrupt card effects, keep that in mind. You can use Book of Moon to set a you can use Book of Moon to set an opponent's monster and it won't be able to activate its effect nor attack, so Book of Moon is a fantastic card all around. Harpy's Feather Duster, of course, you gotta have it like this best card to come with the structure deck, like this is amazing, I love the fact that that came with the structure deck, I'm still so happy about that, <laughs> I finally have a Feather Duster. But yes, Harpy's Feather Duster destroys all spell and traps, staple card, obviously we gotta have it. Potted Avarice. I explained this in the previous video, I believe it was the Arbalist deck, is that when the Nimbles come from? Yeah, must, yeah, yeah, definitely. So Pot of Avarice um, is fantastic for this deck because you will very quickly get five monsters in the graveyard. I mean, that's that's pretty standard, and that will use up resources in your deck to get you to Pot of Avarice. So when all your Nimbles are in the graveyard, all your Disciples are in the graveyard, Pot of Avarice, put them back in the deck. Three Disciples, two Nimbles, because you can special summon a Nimble from the graveyard using Nimble Beaver. So just play around with it depending on what you've got in the graveyard. But Pot of Avarice for the recycle gets you your true tributes back and then they can use their effects to special summon the rest out from the deck. It also lets you draw two cards which will get you closer to your Egyptian god despite adding five extra cards into the deck. Still, it works. Drawing two cards is never a bad thing, okay? <laughs> Level resist wall, this card is fantastic. Oh, we're moving on into the traps now by the way. That's it for the spells. It's a pretty basic lineup. Half the spells are for your engine for getting extra tributes for your Egyptian gods or extra normal summons for the gods. Got the Lair of Darkness for the Darkness engine and then the rest are just sort of staple cards to add into the deck. So that's the basics of the spells. Next we got three traps. All the traps here are to get out your Egyptian gods for the main part. Level resist wall is fantastic. If a higher level monster is destroyed, um, you can special summon as many monsters from your deck as you want so long as their levels equal that of the monster that was destroyed, their combined level. So if you're right Disciple is destroyed, you can use level resist wall to summon a nimble beaver and a nimble mamonga. Just like that. If your ferocious fang fortress was destroyed, oh boy, you can go ham. You can go nimble mamonga plus Ra's disciple. Instantly four monsters right off the bat because Ra's effect will activate summoning two more. You can go into nimble mamonga, uh, nimble beaver, angelo one, never mind. No, yeah, you got you got Caliglo Claw Crow instead of one of them. You know, you can go nimble mamonga, beaver, and claw crow. It's fantastic. It gets you out a bunch of monsters all at once, including you can use it to summon Ra's Disciple, which gets out two more. It's just a fantastic card. Level Resist Wall is brilliant in this deck. Easy to get out tribute, and it works after your monster was destroyed, which means if they spend all their time trying to get, the three, getting rid of the three monsters you have on the field, you just bust this out, summon three more, nice and easy. It's fantastic. Next we have Metal Reflex Slime, mainly to search for a Reactor Slime, but it can also be special summoned as a very powerful defensive monster and extra tribute and ultimate divine beast this is just more of a backup plan um if you get your divine beast in the graveyard which can happen it could happen then you can use this card to keep special summoning it back protecting your other monsters if you have an obelisk in the grave and a slifer on the field maybe your slifer doesn't have a high attack um it couldn't quite get rid of all the monsters your opponent summoned they try to attack it boom ultimate divine beast bring back obelisk and then ultimate divine beast will go and blow up anything that activated its effect on the field it's a pretty good card it's a pretty good card when you get Get the use out of it. So that's the basics of the deck. That's the main deck. Um, there's not much else to say about it. Let's just take it into testing and just to show you what a what a normal hand would look like and see how we run this deck. Okay, right off the bat, this card is, I'm oh, sorry, this hand is pretty good. I would want to go second for the extra draw, see what we got. Unfortunately, not a god card. That's the, that's the only downside of the stick is that you're not guaranteed to get a god, but you do have all these other options. If your opponent has a monster, you can special summon this bad boy. And turn that off, and you can normal summon Ra's Disciple to special summon two more straight from the deck. And then one of two things are gonna happen. Hopefully you draw your Egyptian god next turn. But you don't because you're a sad depressing life but <laughs> point is one or two things are going to happen either your monsters are going to survive 
you're gonna have at least two monsters on the field. Either your monsters are gonna survive or your opponent is just gonna supply the need for a soul crossing, right? So if they summon four monsters to get rid of your four monsters, then when you draw your god soul crossing tribute, they three, three of their monsters gone, easy. If they summon one monster and get rid of one of your monsters, then you still have three monsters left. If they summon two monsters and get rid of two of your monsters, again, soul crossing, tribute one of yours, two of theirs. It's great, soul crossing is just so amazing. It's an absolutely brilliant card. Let's see what other type of hand we've got. <coughs> They're gonna show you how easy it is to actually summon the Egyptian gods in this deck. Okay, draw, what do we got? Ultimate Divine Beast, great card. We've also got this. We can Monarch Scroll for tribute their monster, normal summon this bad boy, right? And follow me on this one. And then his effect, if this card's normal or special summon, discard one monster. I would say... I'd actually go for the Nimble Mamanga in this case, because Beaver can bring it back from the graveyard. And then go ahead and add Slifer or Obelisk. It depends on what you're facing. Remember, Slifer has incredible field presence. Your opponent cannot summon anything with 2,000 or more attack. Or sorry, with anything... Your opponent can't bring out anything with 2,000 or less attack. And if they bring out anything with more than that, it loses 2,000 attack points. Making it probably weaker than Slifer anyway, who should have at least 1,000 attack. But Obelisk can't be targeted by card effects, and he has consistent 4,000 attack. So it really depends on which one you want, what, what your opponent's going for. I'll go for Slifer. Boom, now we have Slifer in our hand, and we can set this bad boy. We can also use Mikami's effect, um, if you had a god in your hand, to send one of the gods. This is what I did in testing, is send one of your Egyptian gods, add another one to your hand, and then ultimate divine beast to protect the one that you, um, the one that you added by bringing back the one that you sent, which is a pretty cool combo. This card probably won't die, but he might, who knows. Once you draw, oh, Beast King Barbaro is fantastic. Nimble Beaver, bring back the Mamanga, and then if Mamanga dies, he brings out two more, and you're probably set to summon your Slifer, basically. So, the, I mean, the deck's pretty simple. It's just get out three tributes, survive, is a very important part. Um, one of the concerns that you may have is that you're running, running, running out of tributes. Um, this is where Pot of Avarice comes in. I've never really had a problem where I run out of tributes, where I don't have enough tributes on the field to summon an Egyptian god. Once I get my god, I'm generally set to summon it, like right off the bat. Or oh, yeah, it's it's never really been a problem. This deck is pretty consistent for keeping monsters on the field and just continuously summoning them when they're destroyed, as well as keeping them alive in the first place long enough. Keeping it keeps your three tributes long enough to bring out an Egyptian god if you don't just do it right off the bat. I mean, right here, I can normal summon Arima. I can special summon this. I can even tribute this if I want. Or I could send Arima to add the field spell and then summon this guy either way, whichever works, and I've got card advance to summon my Egyptian god if I had it. So, look, four monsters right there. It's very easy to get out a bunch of monsters in this deck all at once and keep enough alive to tribute. And then even if you don't, you've got soul crossing. Like, if you run out of monsters, you still have soul crossing. If you run out of monsters, presumably your opponent should have at least three monsters and then you just soul crossing, steal them all, gone, god, summon, win. It's pretty consistent. It's pretty easy to summon the Egyptian gods in this deck. That was the main point. So yeah, it's very straightforward deck. It is a beginner friendly deck. It's not a meta deck to any extent, but this is the best that I could come up with using just one of each structure deck, the Slifer structure deck and the Obola structure deck. And all in all, it's actually a pretty good deck. As long as you're not running into meta decks, trying to use it in tournaments and shit, then this is a pretty good deck. It's a good casual deck deck. It's a good casual deck, okay? It's a, it's not a good meta deck. It's not going to win you the world championships or anything. You might win a game or two in a tournament, depending on who you're playing against, but it is a good casual deck. Also, if you get lucky, you can beat meta decks with this. Egyptian gods are, they, they can actually be pretty tough to beat. Their field presence is pretty huge. Slifer's field presence is pretty huge. Your opponent just loses their normal summon if you get this out before they do anything then there's not a lot they can do, to be honest, generally. Um, they can Raigeki it. That sucks. Yeah, fair enough. Good good job, but that would require them drawing Raigeki. And a lot of these cards can't really be Ash Blossomed. I mean, some of them can, but yeah. Okay, it's 
it can, it, it can work. If you're lucky, uh, heart of the cards, I should say, not luck. If you have strong bond with your deck, heart of the cards, then this deck could definitely work against a meta deck, but don't expect it to. Just hope that you get the red cards, you know? It's, it can, it can. Um, but it is definitely a casual deck. It's a good, fun, casual deck. That's that's all this deck is, really. And yeah, it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. I've said everything in this video. I've said all the combos. There's not a lot, like Condemned Witch is one of them to bring out Rouse Disciple, uh, Lair of Darkness, plus Reactor Slime. That's, yeah, there's not a whole lot of convoluted combos. I'm pretty sure I've said all of the combos and all of the things that you should do with things like I said simple deck I just feel like I need to say more um, but no that's that's all there really is to it I've said which cards go with which and how it all works so yeah um, if you've come up with a combo for this deck that I didn't say or if you have your own version of the combined structure decks then be sure to let me know down in the comments or on the discord if you'd like join the discord server link in the bottom description that's the description you can also follow my Instagram and Twitter I don't post much there but you can follow my Instagram. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like and satisfy me by hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when the next video comes out. The On Thursday, two days from now, it's Tuesday when this comes out, so on Thursday, I will be doing a deck profile for three lots of both structured decks combined into one deck. That will be coming out on Thursday, so if you're interested, and that will be the final video for the Egyptian God Structure decks. After that, I'll be going into Egyptian God decks that aren't made with the Structure decks. So if you're looking forward to that, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was helpful. And uh, yeah, my name is Vincent Carr. Until next time, see ya.